Good evening and welcome to the August 4th, 2014 meeting of the Town of, Plan uh, Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we start this evening, I would like to make an announcement to indicate that item number seven, Ready Seafood, Ready Real Estate LLC, requesting a site plan review for the expansion of two buildings at 340 and 350 Pine Point Road has been tabled at the request of the applicant. So if there are folks here who are here for that reason, I just wanted you to know that. Um, Carol, would you take the roll, please? Ms. Auglis? Here. Mr. Buffard? Mr. DuPont? Mr. Fellows, Mr. Mazur. Here. Mr. McGee. Here. Mr. Paul. Here. Uh, given the absence of several of our normally voting members, all members present are voting members this evening. Um, next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of July 14, 2014. I was absent from that meeting. Uh, so moved. So we have a motion to approve. Approve. I didn't hear that, but I'm going to assume it's a motion to approve. Second. The, okay, we have a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Let's see three. None opposed. One abstention. Our next item this evening is a public hearing. Uh, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive input regarding proposed amendments to Chapter 405. The Scarborough Zoning Ordinance by adding an affordable housing in lieu fee to the zoning districts, districts that allow residential density bonuses. Mr. Chase. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to give a brief overview, uh, as, as just sort of indicated in the title, the proposal uh, adds additional residential density bonus option in town zoning districts that already allow for residential uh, density bonuses through the use of affordable housing. However, this adds a second provision, if you will, uh, which allows the affordable housing to be de developed through the payment of an in lieu fee to be put towards town's affordable housing efforts. Uh, the money, um, ostensibly, the uh, residential density fee, if you will, um, would be $20,000, which would be used to create a an account that the town would hold and then those funds would be dedicated only for the purposes of creating affordable housing in whichever way uh, the town council saw fit. Um, this effort was a collaborative effort between the Long Range Planning Committee and the H Housing Alliance, uh, which occurred ostensibly for the most part last year, um, which culminated in approval by the town council uh, for the inclusion of the affordable housing in lieu fee in the TND district, uh, traditional neighborhood uh, district. Given the success, if you will, of that zoning uh, provision, the Housing Alliance has recommended that the town consider adding the same provisions to the other zones in town that currently allow for the <coughs> residential don density bonuses. So these amendments uh, would be added to the VR2, the VR4, RPO, TVC, and B3 districts in the town. Um, so with that, I turn it back right. to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. Um, Ron, you want to start us off with a oh, public hearing? Thank you. Boy, I'm a little slow tonight. My apologies. Uh, we have an opportunity for public hearing at this point. Um, we would ask that anybody who would like to make a comment on this item approach the podium. Please state your name and address for the record. We ask that you try to maintain a five-minute comment, comment limit. And we also ask that, if possible, try not to repeat. Um, knowing that the board has heard the uh, item and we assume that if one person is saying it, many people are thinking it. So with that, I will open this up to public hearing. Again, if anybody would like to make comment on this item, please approach the, po the podium and state your name and address for the record. <coughs> Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And I will turn it over to the board. Mr. Mazur. Yeah, I think it's a viable option. Read through it, and uh, I think it's a, it's a good way of uh, uh, allowing a builder 
a developer uh, to have an option and uh, for the uh, money to go towards a fund for affordable housing. So I think it's a win-win. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Mr. McGee? I don't have anything to add at this time. All right. Thank you, Nick. Ms. Ogles? Um, as part of the Long Range Planning Committee, this was a this was a long, involved process, and I think that what we've come up with here is really um, wonderful. We tried so hard to get um, affordable housing through um, development um, bulk. What am I trying to say? Let's do it again. Um, allowing the developer to have extra units by doing this, and it obviously hasn't worked. So the Housing Alliance is pretty sure that this is going to work, and I think it's definitely worth a try. And um, it's already been fairly successful in the TND. So I'm just wondering, does it, does it say in the actual ordinance, or is there no need for it to say in the actual ordinance that it's $20,000 bonus per unit dwelling? I mean, $20,000 wave fee, right, mm -hmm. for each dwelling unit? Yes. Does it say that in here? It does. OK. Thank you. That's my only question. All right. Thank you, Susan. Um, also, again, comments as a, as a member on the uh, Long Range Planning Committee as well. Um, a lot of effort went into this. The thing that uh, I have seen over my tenure on the board is the fact that <clears throat> we have approved development after development with the availability of this bonus, and we have an extremely difficult time ever finding anybody who is qualifying um, for um, this ability in, in terms of um, being able to, to have a f qualify for the affordable housing unit. So <clears throat> given the fact that we have items out there right now, we have many developments approved currently out there that do not have the ability to be able to fill these units, I think it's a great alternative that we're giving developers uh, this opportunity uh, to continue on this process and find a way to support affordable housing here in the town of Scarborough since it doesn't seem to be working in the traditional way that we've tried in the past. So very much in favor of this and um, want to make sure that uh, based on what I've heard this evening that the board sends a favorable um, response to the, the town council on this item. So, nice job. Our next item this evening is item number five, Anthony Vale Way. Norman Barubi Builders requests a preliminary subdivision review for a three-lot subdivision on Sarah Liberty Lane. Mr. Chase. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this item has been before the board on a few occasions. Uh, most recently, it was before the board on June 2nd. Thank Primarily, the board and applicant have worked through a number of issues. However, there were, um, leading up to this application, really two primary concerns coming into it. One had to do with the future ownership of the road, given the hammerhead design. The other had to deal with um, board members' concerns with regards to uh, stormwater, groundwater controls on site. Um, based on the applicant's resubmission, they have now uh, dedicated that the road will remain private. Um, the notes are on the plan to that effect. And the public works with that, the public works director would be comfortable at the board. We're willing to grant the waiver on the hammerhead design. Um, as we had talked about with the groundwater, stormwater issues, uh, as board members will recall, uh, at the outset of this application, we heard uh, concerns from a number of abutters regarding uh, sort of existing uh, flooding problems in the neighborhood, particularly when it comes to seasonally high groundwater in particular. Um, so these are sort of known, one, you know, by the property owners as well as by the town, and towns made some efforts um, in the area to make some corrections, but um, one of the concerns the board had, and uh, as uh, really identified by Jim Wendell and Woodard and Kern, our peer reviewers, had requested additional information on the stormwater calculations. And at the direction of Woodard and Kern, the applicant did a heightened review, if you will, a, a deeper analysis. And maybe you can talk about that, sort of the details and the mechanics of that. But um, 
with that analysis, Water and Curtin and Jim Wendell have, uh, are ostensibly comfortable that the project won't have any adverse impacts on the neighbors. Um, with that, um, staff has a few other sort of minor comments here, but those were sort of the, the main pending issues. Um, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jay. Mr. Thompson, welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, appreciate your time to hear our project, Anthony Vale Way. I'm here for uh, Noman Ruby Builders. My name is Bill Thompson. I'm the project manager for BH2M Engineers. Uh, we were last here in June, June 2nd, as Jay indicated. Uh, we're here requesting a preliminary approval, and this project will be a private way, three-lot private way uh, subdivision. Our plans have been uh, updated to have uh, some additional notes, and I'll go through some of those changes. The planning board had requested some plan changes that are outlined in my letter back to Jay, dated January, excuse me, July 21st. Uh, on plan sheet one, uh, an email from Jay also to, to clarify some of the notes, the sort of a housekeeping. Uh, note 27 does reflect now that this is a private way. Uh, the T turnaround <coughs> to the left has been supported uh, as the way of public works. Uh, obviously, it would be a private way. They will not be plowing or maintaining this. And as a private way, uh, we have a, a maintenance agreement that the private way will be owned by uh, the applicant, Norman Bruby Builders, all maintenance, repair, anything associated with the, uh, the 50 foot right of way, uh, drainage, et cetera, will be the responsibility of the applicant. Uh, the other note, there are two other notes. Note 29 was just amended to clearly define uh, the vegetated buffers of how they should be protected and controlled and it just duplicates the note that was on plan sheet three, so they both read identical, so there's no confusion. And then we added note 34 to the first sheet, which is a standard note that the town asked for, uh, for septic disposal system, so where they're located and how the mechanics would work if you're going to uh, make any changes in that. Um, the plans went back out to Woodard and Curran again. Um, they looked at them and, and came back again with their, with their Conclusions, the applicant has provided sufficient information to demonstrate that the project is in general compliance with town standards and will not negatively impact drainage conditions on abutting properties. <clears throat> so we feel that that has been, uh, that has been addressed um, by the peer review and also Jim Wendell has uh, noted his, uh, his support for this. The uh, sheet three, um, my comments kind of follow along some of what I just talked about. At the last meeting, the board also talked about the, the need to really protect these wetlands and buffers. And we have a, um, a condition or, or a, a proposal that um, would be iron rods with red caps that state stormwater buffer do not disturb. Well, in addition, we're proposing a split rail fence on the lot side of all these buffers, which I think was kind of a, re a re recommendation or a suggestion by the board. So all of the, uh, the three lots that uh, have any buffers associated with them, there will be a split rail fence. So again, it's just another indication to say, okay, don't go any further. You're not to touch these buffers. They're to be left grown up, uh, not mowed or taken care of, short of any dead or diseased trees that, that would might be a, um, a hazard to, to a homeowner or, or a neighbor. Again, the plan notes have all been updated that this is clearly a private way. Sheet three has a signature block on it that indicates when and if this gets approved, that gets signed as a private way and gets recorded in the Registry of Deeds. We've also added a street and stop sign coming back out onto Sarah Liberty Lane. <clears throat> One of the other uh, issues that kind of held us up and was a little bit of a roadblock was the, the issue of, uh, of a deed covenant and perhaps its limitation or restrictions on further development. <clears throat> so we were charged, uh, the applicant's attorney, uh, Barbara Dresser, uh, did a, a research and analysis of conclusions of the fact that that condition, if you will, uh, does not impact this project. Um, there was an unrecorded plan done uh, for a Kevin, or ke done by a Kevin Cullenberg, and that had a note on there that nobody could uh, recreate that plan. Uh, it was unrecorded in the registry. It was an approved project by the town of Scarborough quite some uh, number of years ago. Cullenberg, all he could produce for us was photocopies of the title page and the notes that are on that plan, and there are no notes that would, uh, that would subject this further development to any, any conditions that we haven't met. So, again, the two-page letter from the attorney 
as part of our submission packet also. And I believe that uh, completes my update and presentation. If I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thanks, Bill. Thank you. Nick? I think uh, the last time you were here, I mentioned that I was, um, I was pleased that you had gone through the extra efforts after our original comments on the plan regarding the stormwater management. And uh, again, I, I, think, I think I have to thank you again for going through the extra, the extra hurdles on this. I, I think I probably, not attempting to speak for the board, but I will uh, here and say that we, we all are concerned about the stormwater. Sure. Um, so, so the extra efforts are appreciated. Um, as far as feedback on uh, your hammerhead, I'm okay with uh, the design as it, it's being proposed. And um, I appreciate the extra efforts on, on the railings to create the buffer. So those would be my, my comments right now. All right, thanks, Nick. Susan? Uh, this is one of those times when I keep saying I've been hanging around here forever. And in all the years I've been part of the planning board, there have been a couple before, and this is going to be my third time of saying I understand what the engineers are saying, but I personally, as a member of this board, cannot vote in favor of this. Um, there are serious problems that exist already with the houses that are there. Quite frankly, if those people were to come to us today, they would not receive permission to build there, or it's certainly not in that way, because of the fact that this is land that is does it, that, was, that is there primarily to act as a sponge. That's its job, is to act as a sponge. And it's created like a sponge. It's made of the right materials. It's flat. It's supposed to act as a way of keeping water from interfering with anything else up or down in any direction. There's already a problem with this, and I do understand that we've gone, that the applicant has gone to a great deal of trouble to try to make sure that they can do, that they have provided um, as good an opportunity as possible to make this work. But it's hard, but I mean, I've had times in the past where traffic engineers have told us that there would be no problem and we listened very nicely and paid attention and said we don't believe that and voted against it and it turned out that we were right. Um, this is one of those times when um, I'm just going to have to take a stand. I have nothing, nothing personal against anything that's gone on here. I think it's been above board and very professional. But when it comes right down to the bottom, these lots, I truly believe, do not belong in this open space. It, it needs to be allowed to continue to do the job it's there for. It's completely surrounded by houses right now. And um, it's just going to make it worse. It's not a good situation already, and it's just going to make it worse. And that's all I have to say on the issue. Although I would, if I, I'd like to just ask Jay if you would let it be known that this is not something that I'm suggesting that is untoward. I don't think that many people understand that we can actually do this. I mean, I, I'm within my... Yes, the board can... Ex board is asked to weigh evidence against the, the ordinances, and you can take the expert opinion for what you find it to be worth, and if there's other information in the record, such as the public comment, what we've heard, or personal... Uh, knowledge that board members have on, in a particular area or both air, professional area and area of town, you can apply those that judgment as well. You are sitting in judgment of evidence suggested. Okay. Um, so. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you, Susan. Ron? Well, uh, sort of in the middle on this, but clarification, Jay. Uh, Jim Window said he was okay with Woodard and both Woodard and Kern, our peer reviewer, and Jim Wendell, um, particularly Woodard and Kern, was got much more involved as we started, excuse me, delve into the seasonal groundwater water table question. That's where uh, Woodard and Kern suggested a revised modeling. Um, I not, I'm not even going to try to tell you what the acronyms are or what they are because that's what the paid professionals are for. But I do know that based on the June second, or the memo that was prepared for the June 2nd meeting, Woodard and Kern, as well as for this meeting, for that matter, had reviewed the revised stormwater plan, and they were satisfied that it wouldn't have adverse impact based on that analysis. Um, so. Okay. Um, 
My next question is, uh, Mike Shaw said he was okay with the hammerhead uh, since it's going to be a private road, right? Provided it's going to remain a private road, he would be okay with, he would be okay with the board granting the waiver. If he's okay with that, then I'm okay with that. Um, and what we have in front of us is this maintenance declaration for private way. Yep. Is that something you're comfortable with? Uh, yep. Uh, I know we've, we've taken a cursory view. That's something we'll delve into deeper between should the board uh, get, uh, provide preliminary approval tonight. We will um, sort of have all that, all, all those T's crossed uh, as we move towards final. Okay, this is just preliminary. This tonight. is preliminary this evening. So this is not final. So Correct. So there, there's still a few touch-up notes and such. Um, I think he's even alluded to a few of them in his presentation. Um, so. Okay, yeah, I, I heard all of that. Okay, that, that's all I have for the time being. All right, Ron, thanks. Um, I do appreciate the comments of the members of the board, um, and I certainly understand where Ms. Oglis is coming from on this item. Um, and I was also present with her when we've done some things where we have disagreed with the engineers, if you will, and, and the experts on the items. Um, this is one where I feel a little bit differently, and um, <clears throat> I think from a stormwater management standpoint, which was what my largest concern was, I feel like the efforts of the applicant um, has, in fact, given me reason to believe that we're not creating an adverse condition um, to any of the abutters, which is really what my main concern is. If I thought that we were uh, impacting the abutters, then I would feel differently. But I'm, I feel very comfortable that if anything that we've, uh, the engineers have showed that they are actually directing the water away from the abutters, and I'm comfortable with that. And because of that, I really don't feel like I have uh, um, any reason not to approve it. So um, I'm comfortable with it the way that it is. And uh, so I would like to put this down to a vote. Um, I would like to propose that we grant preliminary subdivision approval to Anthony Vale Way Norman Berube Builders for a subdivision for three lots on Sarah Liberty Lane. Is there a second? I'll second it. Not from the public, sir. We've already had that. Um, so we do have a second, and that was Ron. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? I show that to be three to one. Um, Thank you. The other thing that um, I guess I would like to suggest to this board, and I'll leave this up to the board as well, but Based on the number of opportunities that this has been in front of us and given the fact that we're down to having just a few cleanup items, um, I would consider this as a consent item when everything is cleaned up. And I don't know how the board feels about that, but <clears throat> would look for a consensus on that item. I'm okay with that. You know, I think we've gone through this and through this and through this and I respected your comments, which I was sort of leaning back on, and so I'm okay with the consent. Okay. Nick, you're all right with that? Yes. Uh, do we need to vote on that or just make the no. reference to it, Susan? Just Would you be all right with that? I mean, I realize where you stand on the item, so. I'm not going to get to vote when it comes up anyway, so I'm not sure. All right. So that's what I would suggest on this item moving yeah. forward. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Chairman, I'll just make note that uh, typically the board holds public hearing the first time it hears an application formally. Um, there are times, and actually I believe this application is one of them, memory serves me correct, it's, though we've been doing this one for six months or so, where the board would allow, entertain additional uh, pub public comment, and I believe there were two or three uh, sessions for public comment on this item. Um, so um, 
I know it doesn't always satisfy everyone the amount of public comment that's allowed, but that the, those are the policies and procedures that are set up by the community. So. Thank you. Uh, sir, this is a public meeting. This is not open to discussion. Our next item this evening is item number six, Leighton Farm Subdivision Phase 1, Leighton Farm LLC requests a final subdivision review for 24 single-family lots off Elmwood Avenue in the R2 zone. Mr. Chase. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you just know, this application is actually before the board for final review this evening, uh, the board granting preliminary approval on the item on July 14th, uh, just your last meeting. Uh, just by way of background, board members will recall we've actually reviewed this one fairly extensively beginning back in the winter time as a 99 lot subdivision. Um, but back in June, I believe it was, there was an identification of a uh, conflict with the existing cell tower, transmission tower on site, and the applicant is now proposing sort of the first component of the subdivision, uh, 24 lots, really 23 new residential subdivision lots. Uh, to be developed. Um, based on staff comments, um, you know, we, we had some comments regarding sort of the ownership of the open space at the end of the, of the roadway, the ownership of the road, um, and the design. However, based on recent comments or discussions I've had with the applicant's engineer, um, I know they've made some changes to the proposal and layout, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I'll ask the applicant to sort of walk through those changes that staff has conceptually looked at um, in that regards um, as we move forward, and I'll certainly chime in as needed. Um, the other issue that's been raised um, by the town's peer review engineer, again, Warder and Kern, as well as Jim Wendell, is wanting to ensure uh, and understand potential impacts onto the property, uh, the development property from the existing outfall from the hospice uh, site. Um, there's a, I believe it's a pond with a pipe outfall of some form that they just want to be sure we're not going to have issues with uh, some of these residential lots having uh, flooded backyards and getting calls to our public works department where we don't need to. Um, uh, let's see. So I guess with that, I'm going to... Um, at this point, the applicant hasn't received their DEP permit, um, and as I said, I believe there's some uh, changes that we're going to look at here in the plans in a moment. So it, the item uh, isn't anticipated for action by the board at this time, but certainly um, I believe we're probably getting close, but uh, go, go through some of the conceptual changes and where the board is. Thank you, Joe. Mr. Frank, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Sean Frank. I'm an engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight is uh, uh, Vinnie Maeda. Uh, as Jay stated, uh, this is a project uh, we've been working with the board for quite some time. And, and as you recall, based upon the whole issue with the tower, uh, dropped it down from the full build out, if you will, to a, an approval for phase one only. Um, from a permitting standpoint, as we discussed with this board, the intent was to go through the whole permitting, through the DOT and the DEP, uh, with the full understanding that uh, as we were allowed to proceed with future phases of this, at least then it would just be uh, dealing with the planning board uh, for the full build-out. Uh, we have received our traffic movement permit from the main Department of, of Transportation. Um, and I did receive an email from DEP today that they're finalized and we should have that permit by the end of the week. We understand you folks don't give actual final approvals so you have those in hand. Uh, we were certainly hoping that at least we could get to the point where we've addressed all the issues so that hopefully at least three weeks from now we could just be on for consent. Uh, and, and that's where we'd kind of hope to go. As Jay stated, this was the, uh, uh, the project we submitted uh, and, and the folk, what you folks have been looking at. As you may recall, the hammerhead was on the left side of the road. Uh, our, our whole intent associated with that was that's where some proposed parking was going to be uh, to allow for access to the trail system that'll be within the large uh, extensive open space that'll be part of the full build out uh, that we all looked at. Uh, the, town, uh, uh, the town planner brought up a, a valid point in terms of obviously again as we discussed with that hammerhead on the left hand side uh, the road would have to be remain private. 
we're showing that piece of property as we had in the overall development to be conveyed to the, the town of Scarborough. Would the town really want a piece of land, if you will, at the end of a private way? Um, so again, we appreciate uh, staff working with us uh, on that. Uh, what we have now is a slightly shorter road with a hammerhead on the right-hand side. Uh, what that allows, if you will, is for that this, this green piece, uh, basically treated as a standalone project, that if this is the only development that would occur out through here, that we could uh, petition the town council to accept that roadway uh, under the normal process, and as part of that, to accept that open space as well. And that open space is contiguous to what will be a town-owned road, um, and is contiguous to other town-owned property. Uh, that was the major change in association with uh, the overall development. Uh, the uh, the abutting engineer, the, uh, the engineer for the uh, the abutting hospice property was uh, was good enough to uh, forward us uh, their uh, stormwater modeling output in association with the uh, the uh, previous development of the hospice site. We have included that within our model and have specific uh, uh, design in terms of accepting that runoff, and we have provided that uh, to the town engineer for his uh, review and, and approval. Uh, I believe that the, uh, the town has uh, also received some uh, uh, comments uh, from uh, the abutting hospice site in relationship to uh, uh, a buffer from their existing site in the proposed development. Uh, what we have included is a 15-foot uh, undisturbed buffer along that common property line. Um, the idea of that buffer, and I will kind of work on the language just a bit, we call it a 15-foot undisturbed buffer, but the idea is that it, we can still allow for additional plantings to occur within that area. Uh, and we will have, again, those two drainage things on either side, but we will refine that. But the idea is to have 15 feet undisturbed so that we maintain that, that buffer of mature trees along that area, um, as well as to allow some additional plantings if required in coordination with the, uh, with the abutting landowner. Um, the applicant, we also had a little discussion about it in terms of noise associated with the construction uh, of the project. Um, the intent is, in terms of lots five and six, that we won't propose any stockpile areas within that area. Uh, we won't park any equipment overnight within that area, so that when we uh, do come in and have to start work in the morning, that you know the, uh, the, the, the majority of the work and the startup of the vehicles will not be uh, within on those, uh, those two particular areas. Uh, Mr. Bayada has also said that obviously only the trees that have to be cut down in terms of the construction of the homes uh, will actually occur. Uh, obviously that's going to be somewhat on a lot by lot basis. Uh, we have identified some uh, rather mature trees uh, that will be uh, uh, close to the back of the lots, that will be along common property lines. <coughs> Again, it's difficult, if you will, to define those within a specific no disturb buffer, uh, but he has certainly agreed uh, with the abutter to, uh, to minimize that as much as possible. We also stated that uh, lots five and six, again, we would try to maintain those for as long as possible during the road construction. Uh, you know, at, in their existing conditions to provide some type of buffer during that construction. We also want to point out is, again, once Owens Way is constructed, uh, remember, hopefully our next road will actually come down along the easterly sideline and connect back in. And that'll certainly form the basis, if you will, of any future construction on the property. Uh, Owens Way will pretty much be uh, left alone. We'll be extending it. Uh, we'll extend it from this side and then back into so that, that new road, if you will, would, propose, would be utilized for, uh, for any future development on the site. Um, again, Mr. Chairman, I know we spent a lot of time on this. Uh, uh, I think we are getting very close. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure there are some f folks here that, wanna, that have a few things to say, but, uh, um, you know, we would, again, if the board would consider it, hopefully that we are at a point that th through crossing some T's and dotting some I's and finalizing some things with uh, uh, specific details with staff, obtaining that DEP permit at the end of the week, that hopefully we would be, hopefully, a sent for a consent decree at the next meeting. Thank right. you very much. Thanks, John. Mr. Chairman, if I might just sort of speak to, um, typically, I know the board doesn't like to see sort of changes sort of midstream, um, but one of the discussions that we had, particularly in regards to the open space at the end of what was the private way, when uh, I looked at that with other town staff, town manager, um, you know, we sort of became concerned about how the town would feel about taking a rather small three, three and a half acre parcel at the end of a private way, um, recognizing that this may be the full build out. There, 
Uh, we know Mr. Maeda has full plans to do the full build out. He's been permitted for it. But at this time, what the, what the town is being asked to deal with is just this phase of the development. So we really looked at, is there a way we can do this so it can stand alone that if for whatever reason things don't go forward for any host of reasons that this can become a public way with a hammerhead and street design that meets all the town's expectations for operations and, man and maintenance, as well as provide public access to that parcel of land, which, as was suggested, does connect to another piece of open space that connects all the way out to Woodspell. Um, so this really provides a public connection between, uh, potential public connection between Elmwood and Woodspell. Um, so um, that was sort of part of, all part of the discussion that we've had with the applicant in the last couple of weeks. Um, so uh, just wanted to offer that as a little bit of further detail. All right, thank you, Jane. Um, <clears throat> Again, as I had stated earlier, there are um, obviously um, opportunities that we make available to the public to be able to make comment on items that we bring forth to the board. And we do try to make an attempt to provide opportunities for that comment, even though technically uh, we have defined one opportunity to have that happen. Um, this evening where there is no physical action being taken by the board uh, other than certainly hearing what the uh, the applicant is uh, proposing for the changes given the fact that this came to us at a very late time it's difficult for this board to be able to act on those items and and furthermore to be able to understand if um, our uh, town engineers um, and our peer reviewers have made have been able to make an assessment on the changes that are being proposed so given that again we're not really looking to make any formal or final decisions uh, this evening um, having said all of that uh, I do want to make um, available to the public a, an opportunity to make public comment this evening. Um, this could be the last chance to be able to make any public comment, certainly on any items that uh, we feel have some significant interest by the public. We try to um, make that opportunity available to them. So given that, I'd, I'd like to set a few ground rules because this, again, is not, um, not part of our normal process, but we do want to make some comment time available. I will restrict comments to five minutes. Um, and I would ask that if you get up once, you get up once, you don't get up multiple times. So if you would like to make a public comment on the item, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, and uh, please provide us with your comments. Hi, my name is uh, Elaine Brady. I'm the uh, acting CEO of Hospice of Southern Maine. And um, I just wanted to come here and just explain a little bit about Gosnell Memorial Hospice House um, so that the board could understand um, how really important it is that a peaceful and serene uh, atmosphere exists. Hospice of Southern Maine um, is located in Scarborough. Our main office is on Route 1, and our Gosnell House is on uh, Honeywell, and it is an 18-bed facility. This is an acute care facility. It, we take care of the most vulnerable people at this facility. Um, it is for symptom and pain control. And the length of stay, the average length of stay for people that come to our facility is about four to seven days. This is the most vulnerable time of their life, and many of them um, die at the facility. A few, uh, we can um, help their symptoms and they can return back home, but um, as an organization, for instance, last year we cared for over 1,300 people 
in York and Cumberland County, <coughs> and close to 500 of those people were at the Ga came to the Gosnell House for symptom and um, control, and and have died at the Gosnell House. The the uh, there are two lots uh, that abut the um, courtyard um, of the Gosnell House, which is a garden section, and this is an area that when patients on their final sometimes hours. Uh, we actually take out in their, in their bed to enjoy the flowers and the serenity. We have designed the house that patient rooms, uh, which also accommodate family, this is basically family rooms, we make it as home-like as possible, but all of the rooms uh, overlook the garden and a significant amount of them overlook the courtyard. And so we feel it's the noise um, is um, a, a buffer for noise for this facility is extremely important. If you can imagine being at your mother's bedside, maybe in the few, last few days of her life, and holding her hand, this is the atmosphere of our uh, facility. I would invite any of you to come by and um, visit us and see the, the peace and tranquility that you feel automatically as you enter into our facility. And we maintain that for our patients as best we can. Um, we did um, ask Bill Hoffman to um, study the, the um, area to see if there's any way that we could create a better buffer uh, for potential noise that would come from a development. And he came up with a scenario. And we met informally with um, uh, Mr. Mayetta today. And um, it's something that he feels he cannot um, go forward with. Um, he did assure us during the time that we met that this 15-foot uh, barrier, that he would uh, maintain it. Um, he would not cut down trees. Um, and um, there is something on the, on the development plan. I don't understand all of this, but he said that the I asked for it in writing, and he said it would be seen on the development plan. Uh, beyond that 15 feet, uh, there are four to five very large trees that go beyond this 15 feet, and I asked if it would be possible if he could even maintain those. He was not comfortable in saying that he would. Um, that, that is nothing that he could guarantee, although he said he would try. So I... Um, I just respectfully ask that the board understand the nature of our facility and what it provides to the patients that we serve. And all we are asking for is some buffer for some um, peace and serenity for our patients. I'll take any questions. Thank you, Ms. Brady. Uh, good evening, Dave Perkins. I'm another hospice board member. Elaine's the head of the organization. I'm a board member. Uh, we've had other discussions with Mr. Mieta tonight, continuing to try to really work on what's going to happen or not happen in that 15-foot area. Um, and also talked a lot about noise dur during construction. And the one thing that we added, I think, that the uh, land use planner uh, referenced was that um, either Mr. Mayetta's company or hospice could plant within that 15 feet area. And so we're hoping that that shows up in the uh, conditions or the notes or whatever the planner uses for uh, language. Um, and so we just wanted to make sure that that made its way into the record. Those four trees that are I understand there's four really beautiful trees just outside of that 15-foot area, and, and uh, Elaine already talked about the fact that uh, that's not being included in there, but if there's anything we can do to protect those, um, that would be a big plus. Thank you. Mr. Perkins? Uh, 
Thank you. My name is uh, Dr. Daniel Hayes. I'm a retired medical oncologist. Uh, I worked in the uh, uh, Campus Drive facility uh, since its inception, and I retired two years ago. I've been a board member of the Hospice of Southern Maine uh, since its inception. Um, as a professional, uh, and I, I heard the comments from Susan in the previous discussion, I wanted to emphasize that um, I, I believe that the serenity and the peace uh, and the public commitment to uh, uh, our people having a good death, which is the mission and the function of the Hospice of Southern Maine, uh, not be uh, um, minimized in any way, uh, whether um, I would be uh, considered a consultant uh, or a board member or even just a professional in the community, uh, I think you would get <laughs> universal acknowledgement uh, throughout the world, let alone this community, that the Hospice of Southern Maine is an uh, important institution and element of the town of Scarborough, an extension of its uh, regional commitment to its people. Um, uh, we've been working on um, establishing a hospice since I uh, started practice in 1976. It took us a very long time. Uh, and I want to underscore that the facility uh, is um, very much dependent uh, on taking care of its people with peace and tranquility. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening, Mr. Chair. My name is Carl Turner. I'm in the eighth year of membership on the Board of Hospice of Southern Maine. And I think Elaine Brady's comments capture my thinking very well. The tranquility of the garden space that looks over toward <coughs> lots five and six is a really wonderful, peaceful setting. And we have talked with Mr. Maeda. I believe he is sensitive to our concern. The only question I would have is how do we encapsulate his goodwill and our desires so that there is no misunderstanding as we go forward. I think his point with regard to holding five and six in reserve and doing them last after the rest of the 20-some lots have been developed, if at all possible, is a good step. And obviously, his willingness to allow us to enhance the existing planning in the buffer zone is also a very good move. All of those things said, it's still possible that the noise level could be unacceptable in the eyes of the listener, or the ears of the listener, rather. Um, I think. Mr. Maeda has offered to make sure his equipment is not stored in proximity to five and six, but the noise of those starting up and moving around would be minimized. So again, I think he's trying to be accommodating. At the same time, we have a valid concern for the people whose families come and spend their last days with their loved ones in our facility. And anyway, we can capture this so that there's no misunderstanding as this development goes forward. We'll only make it better for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Good evening. My name is Gail Brazell. I am a relatively new resident of Scarborough, having moved here in October of 2010, and also one of the newest members of the Hospice of Southern Maine Board. <clears throat> one of the reasons that my husband and I moved to Scarborough when we had an option to move uh, four years ago was that Scarborough was a town that embraced individuals at all stages of their lives. And having a facility like the Gosnell House here in Scarborough 
where we can respect individuals at another phase of their life is important. And having a facility and a garden such that those individuals can, and can see these last few days as something you know, of beauty makes it important and some place for serenity and quiet. So I would encourage the board to really um, consider this option because we want to make those individuals, which would be our, our families, our friends, when they get to the last stages of their life, that they have a place where they can enjoy it with their families as they transition through that, that final phase of life. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, pardon me, ma'am. Would you be so kind as to spell your last name for the record? Yes, sir. B-R-A-Z, like in zebra, E-A-U. Thank you very much. My first name is Gail, G-A-Y-L-E. Yep. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, seeing none, I will turn this over to the board. Ms. Aguas, would you start us off, please? Sure. You stand up there. Question number one, this new location of the um, <clears throat> hammerhead? Yes. Do I have it in my packet? You do not. I did not think so. And I have a hard time because of the coloring. Okay, and what's down below was the previous one? Yes, yes I'm sorry, yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Okay, so essentially the um, loop is not going to be built right now. Where the hammerhead, the new hammerhead location is where the private road as, as private. Phase one would in terms of construction right would stop right there, that's okay. correct. Fine. Um, so I just have a few questions about the actual um, construction process, part of what I've heard from the people in the, who've come tonight and from looking at it myself. Um, okay. The 15-foot buffer. Okay. Yeah, somebody said you're going to be able to do plantings in it. Who's going to be able to do the plantings? The owner of the property or the abutter? In the, and I'm thinking in this case of hospice house. Either. Either. And that's yes. going to be written down. We'll put it right on there. Thank you. <laughs> um, the trees that have been marked, the larger trees that have been marked, I mean, that, that have been noted on the map, I mean, they have been actually physically marked with tape or something. So if people want to go out and take a look at what the trees that are, we know are not coming down, they'll know what they are. Good. Um, I would just like to encourage, because of what is what who your abiding neighbors are, that you continue this relationship that you're developing now with them. So as we move along, they will know, for example, when the lot has been sold and the site location has been determined, <coughs> what trees do have to come down, so it won't be a big shock. I think that that would be a real, you know, nice thing to do and would be good for the public relations part. Someone that came up said, we know, we have been told that you're not going to store machinery on five and six, and when you start it up in the morning, therefore, you know, so does that also mean that you're going to develop five and six last? Someone said that. Yeah, you might want to just. I'm Vincent Mayer. I'm the uh, the developer for this project. Uh, well, five and six are the the two sensitive lots that are mm -hmm. directly behind this this sensitive area they're speaking about. It's right here in the in their in their project. Uh, it's fairly well wooded uh, for the whole site. Right. And what what we were hoping to do is leave those lots in their existing state as long as possible. Okay. But certainly, I didn't want to preclude you, for example, from being able to come in and purchase a home on Lot 5 if that was where you wished to live. So it's our current plan to leave those wooded and not disturb them until we absolutely have to. Okay. In other words, if a, if a client came along that just couldn't live with a different lot um, and we had to do them, then like, like you suggested, we had already offered to meet with 
them before we clear the lot and show them what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Because then, by then, I would know what the client was going to build, and I could show them what we were going to clear and, you know, just, you know, right. facilitate that's all good I'm public. Really asking for. I yeah. think that that's helpful. Public would relations like would be good. Just so, that, having sat on this board off and on for a long time, this is this is always difficult because when an existing building, in this case, it happens to be a hospice, it could be residential houses, when something goes in next door. We, we can't tell people not to do what it is the ordinance allows them to do. You know? I mean, in other words, this, don't, please don't take this the wrong way, but the answer really is if the buffering had been so important, you should have bought more land. You know what I'm trying to say, right? I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I'm just saying you don't own that land, and therefore you don't have the, the um, legal right to have any control over what happens up to that line and the 15-foot buffer, which is required, okay? So I feel badly because it is going to be disruptive, no matter how much Mr. Mayetta tries, and he will, I know he will, it's going to be disruptive. You're going to have construction. So um, I hope that you all work together and keep it, as, keep it as reasonable as possible. In the meantime, thank you for being willing to do that. I appreciate it. And I don't have any other questions at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Ron? Susan, well stated, first of all. Well stated. Uh, oh. my, my, my sentiments exactly. But if I'm listening to everybody tonight, it, there seems to be a, 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 at least an open dialogue, which we don't always get. We don't always get, no. So, and I hope that open dialogue uh, would continue, and uh, uh, from what I'm from what I'm hearing, uh, the applicant is doing his best to accommodate as much as possible within the realities of the situation, um, the the needs uh, of the hospice house. Um, just a couple of notes uh, that uh, uh, I made here. Um, we're still waiting to hear from the town engineer of peer group about drainage, you okay with that? that it, exactly. In terms of their final sign-off, that's yeah. correct. I did provide them. Again, it was good enough uh, uh, for the engineer for the hospice to uh, provide us his model, so we included that within ours and provided that to the town engineer for his review. Okay. And you've reworked uh, the hydrant situation to satisfy the fire department? Yes, that was just some clarification, so they're all set with the hydrants. Okay. And, um, uh, we, we heard about taking trees down. Uh, we're going to also see in the final plan, planting of trees. I, I don't want to get that specific uh, through the chair, Mr. Mercer. Uh, I think what we're going to state there is that within that 15, right now I'm calling out as a 15 foot undisturbed buffer. I think the point is 15 foot undisturbed buffer, except for the removal of dead or dying trees and coordination with the town engineer or the planting of additional vegetation by either the applicant or the abutting property owner. That's what I was just planning on doing from a notation standpoint, not really getting into a specific landscaping plan per se. And you saw that uh, from staff that the easement areas have to be labeled? That they and, and yes, that has been corrected. And again, I apologize because, again, I do understand that, you know, you folks uh, are seeing all this. And, and as usual, I was running around. Uh, uh, but again, staff is certainly good enough to meet with me last week to go through these comments. Uh, we have addressed those items and resubmitted them to staff for review. And obviously, our full intent is to uh, make a final, final submission to you folks uh, uh, at the end of this week uh, that addresses uh, all those outstanding items. Well, I'll be interested in seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all, right. all right, Ron, thank you. Nick? Um, I think I, I have to echo um, Susan's and Ron's sentiments on this as well. As, <clears throat> as much as I appreciate um, the comments that we've heard tonight, um, you know, we, we do have a set of boundary lines here. Um, and I think, I think we would encourage um, you to continue the dialogue. There are certainly, I believe, probably other options, whether or not they've all been explored. Um, are these lot, just out of curiosity, are the lot sizes as small as you can make them on five and six? Are they pretty much? I think you're allowed to go down to 7,500. The, the maximum, I think, I think the size we're showing there is 9,800. Not that I'm attempting 
to modify your plan here. Well, and I appreciate uh, <laughs> that, but, you know, again, by trying to market just, it, so. Uh, I like to think out of the box and perhaps a sliver of uh, those lots could be put up for sale, just thinking outside of the box. But um, <laughs> anyways, I'd encourage you guys to um, continue the discussions and as part of being a good neighbor, we appreciate that as well. Um, as far as uh, the change in the plans, I certainly understand why you went, you went through it, and I don't have any any substantial comments to make at this time regarding your most recent changes? All right, Nick, thanks. Um, again, it's very encouraging to see um, developer working with the Butters. We definitely appreciate that. It makes everybody's lives much easier uh, when there's good communication going back and forth. And again, I totally agree with Sarah, uh, Susan's comments earlier how um, no matter how hard people try to minimize some of the noise, and I think that there's some great steps being taken to make that happen. It's, you know, it will be virtually impossible for there to be no noise. Um, and given the sensitivity of the abutter, we do fully appreciate that. Um, and um, very, very happy to hear that that efforts are being made to try to do some kind of a joint effort even to uh, minimize that or help uh, rejuvenate the buffer space in that 15-foot zone. So um, all the other items that, that I have seen on this, uh, I know that Jay is working um, with um, the developer and also with our reviewing staff to take care of the latest items that have come out. Um, I'm assuming just based on what I'm seeing here that the hammerhead is going to be opposite lot 13. Sean? That's correct, yes. That's exactly correct. Right. That's what you're intending? Okay. And that basically the end of the road would be at the end of the hammerhead. It, exactly right. Just in yeah. terms of the size of the, the hammerhead that's yep. required by zone. So it just goes basically a little bit past the end of lot 13. Okay. I, hard to see from here and so I I'm just that. trying to visualize what you're doing <laughs> I couldn't see it from there either just so you know um, so you know I, I I'm good with what I'm hearing in terms of what little bit we have left I don't have any issues and um, certainly I do appreciate the public coming out and making the comments that they're that they're making and I encourage you to continue to speak with the developer um, and I feel somewhat comfortable that there's going to be at least a listening ear when that does occur. So um, hopefully everything can go as smooth as possible. So at this point, if we were to take any action at all, I think the applicant is wondering if we clean up the items that have been listed this evening on Jay's list um, in terms of what else needs to be looked at. Provision on plans, notes on plans, um, the hammerhead location spelled out, et cetera, the review of the um, drainage analysis coming off the abutting site. If all of those items get corrected and the DEP permit comes in, the applicant's looking, are we okay with this enough to be able to make this a consent item? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Chase. One item that I've heard referenced is a bit about sort of construction, maybe phasing is not the right word, but construction details. Um, is that something that the board is going to be interested as a condition of approval, or is that an item that you're willing to leave to the applicant and a butter to work out? Um, I guess I just want to be clear on what the board's expect expectations yeah. are for that item. Yeah, so. I'm a great believer in conditions of approval, but I think that the relationship has been established here. And I don't think we have to be any more specific, but the butters need to know if you're not happy, come in and tell us. Mm -hmm. And maybe just we could offer is perhaps we could come up with one more general note that is actually on the recorded plat that states in terms of at least the conversation we had here that, you know, no stockpiling or parking of equipment within lots of five or six, or at least something along those lines. So it's on the recorded plan, and that's something you folks will actually have a chance to, to that, read and look that'd at. That'd be great. Yeah, I can't ask for anything. That'd be great. I mean, one of the things I had actually had on my, on my notes list was hours of construction, but in this particular case, I don't think that is a 
that's a factor. I mean, normally when we look at other residential uh, areas in terms of disturbances and stuff, we try to establish actual construction hours. Um, but I think in this particular case, normal construction hours, and I'm saying normal that 7 to 4, 7 to 5 kind of thing is what we would be expecting so on this project um, so I don't, I don't think that would be an issue so. from a consent standpoint ron you good with that absolutely nick susan yep all right so we'll handle it that way moving forward once you get all your permits get everything squared away with town and staff is satisfied that we've met all the stuff that we've talked about tonight We'll take it and move it forward in that fashion. Well, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank right. you very much. No, thank you for coming in and getting this, uh, getting this happening. And again, I appreciate the public coming thank in as much. well and making their comments. So, all right. Our next item is the town planners report. I do not have anything to report this evening. Is there an administrative amendment report? We did not have any administrative <laughs> amendments in the last few and weeks. Then we'll move on to correspondence. Um, other than what you received um, from the meeting, actually there was an email that was provided on the Ready Seafood, I believe, from Robert Rovner. I haven't had an opportunity to read it as it was just handed out to us tonight, but that okay. did come in and where that item was tabled. We didn't get to that. Um, so that's all I have at this point. Uh, other than just for the record that I received uh, the uh, tape uh, disc uh, that was I didn't look at notice uh, so yeah and just as a general statement we would ask if anybody would like to uh, have materials delivered to any members of the planning board we would ask that that occur through the town planning staff um, provide the information that you would like us to receive to staff and they will get it out to us that is the method of getting information to the entire board um, planning board comments I'm going to defer to your comments about the woman to your right okay <laughs> thank you wow that almost never happens so thank you I, <laughs> you know this this really is a privilege for me um, I'll get emotional here you but too. 